All right, so we have put another layer of paint over 14, a different color, and another layer of paint over 15, a different color. We're going to let those dry. We're going to go back to those when they're dry. Okay, we're on number 13. We previously laid down a wash and we let it dry. All right, so we've got a background layer that's dry. Okay, go get uh, your paintbrush and I want you to layer a different color on top or more than one color, up to you. Okay, some things we discussed before, when you add white to a color, you make it more opaque, less transparent. So I just added some white to my green. Of course, I now have a tint of green, but I've also made my green a little bit more opaque. All right, so layer on a good thick layer of paint. You don't have to cover the entire background, but most of it. All right, for scraping this, what we're going to do is technically remove some of the paint in a controlled manner. All right, so everybody's got a palette knife on their desk. All right, now while the paint is still wet, you are going to scrape away some of the paint. It can be random and abstract, or maybe you want it to look recognizable. All right, so for instance, if I just did some waves. All right, that is scraping. So you are removing some of the wet top layer to reveal the dry layer below it. All right, so all I had to do was use my palette knife paint knife. You could use the back of your paintbrush if you want sort of a larger rounded area. Um, other people use sometimes like exacto blades if you want a really clean, sharp line. This is also called scraffito. All right, later we're going to go back to 14 and 15 when those two layers are dry. Let's move on to 16 dripping. Okay, dripping is just what it sounds like. We're going to go get uh, one of your paint brushes. I'm just going to use my liner brush, the uh, small, thin, round brush. And I'm going to get my paint palette. I'm going to add a little bit of paint to it. and a whole lot of water. All right, little bit of paint and a lot of water. I'm just sort of dripping the water into the well. Okay, so dripping is exactly what it sounds like. We're literally just going to get a lot of wet paint, load up your brush with it, and just let it drip onto your page. Now, with dripping, you can use different brushes and get different sort of sizes of your drip. So that was my liner brush. Now I'm just going to go grab my... Filbert. Remember, Filbert is the rounded, flat but rounded brush. I've got a little bit more color on there too, so I'm going to drip hopefully some blue and green.
All right, I could use that. Okay, so that was sort of really, um, that had a lot of paint in it. This one, my uh, sort of turquoisey color has less paint, more water. Okay, so if this was my painting and I wanted to add some interest just with some abstract drips, I could do that. You know, here I've got some of my drips blending. See that? So I've got my blue into my turquoise sort of randomly blending. I could leave that there. So if I just wanted the big drips, I could leave that on my painting. Let's say it was a portrait and I just wanted to do some big drips. Your other thing that you could do with drips, though, is maybe you want them to actually not be just sort of drops. You want them to be long long drips. So I'm just going to lean my paper up at about 45 degree angle and let the drips fall down. All right, and you can do that a bunch of ways. Obviously, if this was a big, big canvas, you could use a really big brush and a lot of water and do a whole like wash of drips across it. These were just, you know, a couple confined drips. Okay, moving on to number 17, splatter. We already know how to do spattering with our watercolors. So splatter is just kind of like a thicker spatter. All right, we've already got your watered down paint that we did for the dripping. Go get some of your brushes. Um, we've done it before with the liner brush. I'm gonna just dip that in my color. I'm gonna hold my fingers of my non-dominant hand out and simply tap to splatter or spatter. That's using my liner brush. I'm gonna go grab my Phil Filbert brush and spatter with a larger brush to see how that looks. Okay, and then don't be afraid to grab another color and splatter and spatter with another color on top. All right, we're building up texture and even movement with spattering. If you want, you could grab two brushes at the same time or three brushes at the same time. Why not? I'm going to grab two brushes and put them both out and tap, 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 tap. All right, for number 18, non-traditional marks, you're simply going to make a bunch of paint strokes using anything but a paintbrush. So you could use the blunt end of the paintbrush. You could use your fingers. You could use a feather. You could use a stick. You could use a piece of your sweatshirt. I don't know. Uh, there are artists who paint with their own hair. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't recommend it with acrylic. Remember acrylic stains. All right. So I'm simply going to get my finger Chuck Close. Remember Chuck Close? He paints with his thumbprint and fingerprints. All right. So I've loaded up my finger with half green, half turquoise. All right, I've also painted with the back of my paintbrush. All right, so you're just exploring other tools to make marks. And by the way, I was stamping with my fingerprint. What if you actually paint with it versus stamping? Okay, and also, how about this? Get that palette knife one more time. 
you can paint with a palette knife. So I'm going to scoop up some of my orange or yellow paint on the back of my palette knife. See that? On the back of my palette knife. And I can paint with the palette knife. All right, so I've painted with the back of my paintbrush. I've painted with the palette knife. I've painted with my fingertip. What else can you paint with? All right, for our last one, number 19, we are going to add texture by adding a medium to your paint. Mo uh, traditionally, people added what was called modeling paste to their paint, but I have, it's very popular right now to find something that's even more fun and more thick. We're going to use what's called joint compound, otherwise known as spackle. Has anybody seen anybody install tile in their house before? This is the stuff that can adhere the tile to the wall. Um, this is not grout. It's not the stuff that goes in between. All right, so notice that I'm using my palette knife to scoop it around. Here is some fresh joint compound. It's kind of like the consistency of cream cheese. All right, now this is some joint compound that got exposed to air. See how like really thick it is and almost crumbly? All right, so in a moment, you're going to go grab a little chunk of joint compound from the bucket with the red lid with the paint knife. All right, and what I'm going to do is add it to my paint and paint with it. Scoop it out with a clean palette knife. No paint in the joint compound. Clean palette knife. All right, so I've got my joint compound, and I'm going to blend it with my paint. So I'm going to add some paint to my joint compound. Okay, look up, guys. I've added paint to my joint compound, and I'm using the palette knife to mix it together. The palette knife gives me more control than a paintbrush because I can scoop the paint back and forth and then mix it. All right, now my goal here is to get the paint pretty thick so that I can make some really nice texture with my very thick paint strokes, also known as impasto paint strokes. Now, once again, you could actually paint with, guys, I'm recording. Sorry. That was Joe using bad language on my video. All right. <laughs> okay. So next, I'm going to scoop up some of my joint compound with my palette knife, and I can actually paint with the palette knife, right? Okay. Other option would be to just get your paintbrush and dip it into the mixed acrylic and joint compound and paint with it. And I'm going to mix in some white and green too. Now what you should notice from adding the joint compound to your paint is that it's now super thick, very textural, and it's really staying in place, right? Hey, listen up, guys. Notice that I am painting wet into wet. I've got the blue paint with the joint compound. Now I've got the white paint with the joint compound. I'm painting wet into wet and really making my paint strokes visible. This is what the impressionists 
did. Their paint strokes are very visible. And we're helping to do that by adding our joint compound and using different values. My light blues all the way to my white. And I'm making sort of a cresting wave here with my joint compound, my blue and my white. The paint knife. So I started painting with my uh, palette knife, but I'm also using my brush. Once the uh, additional layer dries. All right, that's it for 16, 17, 18, and 19. Um, we're going to take a my uh, 14 and 15 are still wet, so let's go ahead and put those on hold for about five more minutes, and we'll come back to 14 and 15. <laughs> 